Small businesses industries are being affected and uh, the MBSSI has indicated that it's going to create an online portal so that businesses can forward the applications. So thankfully we have on the line business development practitioner, also CEO of Orios Group, John Amat, to discuss this. So John, I was asking how effective this online portal will be and how transparent it will be as we look forward to the disbursement of the uh, stimulus package. So, Daryl, um, can you hear me? I can hear you loud and clear. Wonderful. So, thank you for having me. Um, I think technology, yes, it's a good um, initiative to roll out, but we've got to look at the root causes that it's necessitating this bailout that government has given out to people. So, I'll look at it in, in some scenarios. Number one is we've had a largely informal sector of economy where there are certain people with that informality that have had interactions with the former system, meaning that they pay tax, they may be registered, um, they are fiscal addresses. There are those that are largely unidentifiable, what it means that they have paid some tolls, levies, depending on where they are, and so on and so forth. And so, just rolling out technology may not be able to clearly um, identify him because of the educational background and so on and so forth, which is on the least of my challenges. The other part is that for, for these people that are looking for funding, well, are we presuming that they are looking for funding? That should be a better way to put it. One of the challenges that SMEs face could be the number of these. One is they have supplied needs to ex parties who are or who don't have the, the good financial muscle to be able to pay them. That's one. There are others who may want to procure equipment or may want to, you know, show up. What are the needs of these these SMEs or MSMEs? It's something that government needs to look at. So we need to expand the conversation around just uh, around funding to include. What are the root costs for these businesses? Do they require, do some require business development? Do some require financing? Do some require um, um, complementary financing? We have a kitty now that we can use to then piggyback on other initiatives and match funding, which means that we can even do more with the 600 million that just directly disperse and utilize the full funds that we have. So it's important that we do that. And that, that's the only point of view to do that, may, but may be limited in its lens rule out. The other part is, should the, the fund that, that is being set up now is best work with local players. The MSI has VACs across the country and so on and so forth. But can we work with the existing banks, the rural banks and so on, for this best so that we can, we can, we can sort of have a proper KYC and then know what we're using the funds to pay for? Because largely, not every company needs funding right now. And on the KYC part, we've got to look at the evaluation criteria too. I mean, if you're going to fund these people, you've got to look at all the propensity of that MSME to print jobs. There must be a metric on the number of jobs they can create. You've got right. to look at the capacity of the founder itself. The capacity has to do whether or not they have knowledge of their market, whether or not the ROI, the return on investment in that market is appreciable or can be, can be, can be, can be, can be. Okay, we'll leave that uh, conversation at that. You had a uh, business development practitioner, John. I'm going to talk about. Uh, issues such as the eligibility criteria as we look forward to the disbursement of the uh, COVID-19 stimulus package. Apologies for the quality of that connection.